Okay, so um, so we looked at anger, what anger can result in if it's unchecked, if it's not managed, um, you know, when we react in anger. So when we react in anger, it results in a breakdown of um, of the relationship, right? So in anger, it just clouds our emotion, it clouds our reasoning, and we, you know, when you look back, you see that you would have done a lot of things uh, or said a lot of things that you, uh, you normally won't say or do uh, if you're not angry, right? You would have done some things that then you look back and why did I do that? You know, how, and how um, how did I do that? Why did I end up saying these things? Because uh, you know, and then you realize that it's it's because of anger. It's because anger clouds us, clouds our um, you know uh, our reasoning, and we say some unreasonable things. We do some unreasonable things because we are we are angry and we're just given in. Right. So scripture is very clear that uh, we need to uh, well in our anger that we should not sin. Okay, so it's so just because you felt angry, uh, that does not mean that you have sinned, right? But what you do with an anger will will decide whether we have sinned or whether we have uh, you know even in our uh, you know if you're if you're having those um, uh, thoughts or if you're in in your mind you're just imagining maybe um, taking revenge or doing those things and you know, all those things are happening in the mind, you know, and, uh, you know, our, um, our attitude changes towards that person. Now that, that is going to be very detrimental to the relationship, right? Even though things have not happened physically, but you thinking about it, constantly pondering about it, right? And uh, that also results in a breakdown of relationship because next time when you meet the person or when you speak to the person, Everything changes. Your attitude has changed. The words that you're going to be using um, uh, towards that person is is different, and so on. So, um, in, in your notes, there is a questionnaire. There's a anger and relationship questionnaire, and it's uh, and it's quite um, quite a useful thing to go through. Okay, and you can respond by writing true or false to all these statements. There are about twenty five statements, so you can actually write true or false. To uh, to these uh, respond uh, to these statements. Okay, so uh, let me just read through some of these things, right? And and at the end of this, you know, when you you know total it up, okay, how many responses did I get? Uh, did I respond to as uh, how many questions did I? I mean, all these statements did I respond to as true? How many statements are false? Then you add it up. It gives it. It kind of gives a picture of um, our anger level. Right in in relationships, uh, uh, so it's it's it uh, reveals a bit about what's happening on the inside, and uh, some of the things that we need to do in order to change. Right? Okay, let me just read through. Okay, first statement: uh, I don't show my anger about everything that makes me mad, but when I do, look out. Okay, so here's a person who's uh, you know keeps everything stuffed. Right? There's no outlet so so there's uh, it happens over a period of time day one day two day three okay same thing there's no anger no anger but then when the anger finally hits it's like it's uh it's a totally different person right so you know does a lot of things there's so much of wrath okay second one i still get angry when i think of things my spouse did to me in the past Okay, so here's a scenario where the person has not healed from whatever injustice was done, right? Whatever was done in the past. Okay, so that creates that uh, because there's no healing, that continues to fester as a wound and uh, it brings up anger whenever you think about it. Okay, waiting for my spouse or when he or she is late really annoys me. I fly off the handle with my spouse easily. In a sense, I get angry with my spouse very easily. I often find myself having heated arguments with the people who are closest to me. So, you know, what happens normally is when people are close to you, then there are no, there's no formality, you know, in our speech, in our action. There are no filters. And uh, you, we, true, we show our true self. And uh, if anger is something which is a problem that we are, you know, we are actually struggling with 
then we because there are no filters we just show easily okay so um i get angry um so that that is what uh, it says you know and um, i find myself having heated arguments okay then next one i sometimes lie, lie awake at night and think about the things that upset me during the day uh, when my spouse says or does something that upsets me i don't usually say anything at the time but later spend a lot of time thinking about what i should have said so here you know there's uh, it's going on these conversations are in the mind Okay, the, so just replaying those conversations. Okay, this person said this. My spouse said this. Uh, oh, I should have said it. I should have said these things. These are, these are three things I should have just got back, you know, and put her in a place or put him in his in his place. Right. So, um, so again, here again, uh, you're um, going back to that instance and uh, replaying those things and getting angry at it. Okay. Um, I find it very hard to forgive my spouse when he or she does something wrong. I get angry with myself when I have lost control of my emotions. My spouse really irritates me when he or she doesn't behave the way he or she should. If I get really upset about something, I have a tendency to feel sick later, either with a weak spell, uh, weak spell, uh, headache, upset stomach, diarrhea. Okay. So here's the thing. You know, this is again something that. You know, maybe there's no outlet, there's no processing. Um, you know, you're not uh, talking about it, and just keep it all inside, and it affects the physical health as well. Right? How our emotions affect our physical health. So, um, falling sick, uh, weakness, headache, upset stomach, guys. It's so it's so intense those emotions of anger and um, irritation, and because it has not been processed and dealt with. It affects, you know, sometimes skin conditions, allergies happen because of that as well. You know, stress causes that. Okay, people I've trusted have often let me down, leaving me feeling angry or betrayed. When things don't go my way, I get depressed. I am apt to make frustrations. Uh, I'm apt to take frustration so badly that I cannot put it out of my mind. I've been so angry at times I I couldn't remember things I said or did. After arguing with my spouse, I hate myself. I've lost relationships because of my temper. When upset with my spouse, I often blurt out things I later regret saying. My spouse is afraid of my bad temper. When I get angry, frustrated, or hurt, I comfort myself by eating uh, or using alcohol or other drugs. Oh, this is a dangerous trend again. You know, you get angry, you lose your cool, you say things, do things, and then, um, you know, you're feeling so bad about yourself, and then there is a comfort, you know, the way to comfort or even anesthetize the pain is compulsive eating, overeating, maybe, or, you know, even using alcohol and drugs. Okay. Um, when my spouse hurts or frustrates me, I want to get even. So, revenge, right? Um, I forgot, I've gotten so angry at times that I've become physically violent, hitting other people or breaking things. Okay, so um, physical outlet. So um, you know, venting it out on people and and on things. Right, hitting something, breaking something, plates, uh, glass, whatever you know, uh, or, or throwing things around. Okay. Um, at times, I felt angry enough to kill. Right, so, so that's so that's a possibility. Again, sometimes I feel so hurt and alone. I feel like committing suicide. So self harm, and killing oneself. I'm a really angry person, and I know I need help learning to control my temper and angry feelings because it has already cost me a lot of problems okay so so this this is really um if we if we would like to introspect and reflect on what's happening in us um it's it gives us a some indication of what we need to be doing you know if if we have a lot of true if you responded true to a lot of things then definitely you know we need to address there's a the there's an issue with anger, and uh, you know this is what the Word of God says. You know, in Proverbs, it talks about how a person who's always angry, who's uh, full of wrath, is like a city without walls. 
in the sense it's uh, you know those days when you when you have a city and it doesn't have a fortified wall it was always open for the enemy's attack right? it was always open uh, it was in a very very vulnerable position so it is like that right so personally we might feel okay that, oh when i went to my anger when i speak out in anger put people in place and i shout out uh, intimidate others with my anger um, well i sometimes you, you know you're saying like oh, i feel good yeah I, I gave it to that person i gave it back to that person but the fact is that spiritually speaking we are like a, a, a city without walls right we are we can be easily you know it's a button that the enemy can use you know it's just enemy has to press that button and knows that you will lose your cool you will you know you will say things and and the enemy just has to bring that right person uh, across or you know uh, cause that kind of a confusion um, and here we are right we will just give in to anger so you know if we know that we have an issue then we need to address this right so if a person like if if you're a young person and, and not yet married and if you have those anger issues it needs to be dealt with before we get married right it needs to be addressed dealt with maybe there are hurts that have not healed right and you're angry with yourself you know there are some people who are always angry um recently i, I remember going to a to a shop and um somewhere near our office actually and uh, we have gone past several times and and i find that person that shopkeeper very angry you know, very angry speaking angrily on the phone um and so uh, and it's so visible that you know you note i notice it all the time you know every time and um, then after uh, uh, some time i just noticed that uh, this person was smiling talking to someone on the phone and i said wow this is out of the ordinary you know, this is an exception so it was so it was so um, apparent right person being angry all the time right so the thing is this like there could be some hurt which has not been addressed there's maybe some regret of the past um, something that we have we have done we have not done and we've not dealt with it right we've not come to terms with it and that bothers us over and over again and we take that into the into the marriage relationship as well and we bring that in and uh, it causes chaos in the relationship right because marriage, uh, the the anger is unchecked and just causes chaos day in and day out um so the thing is to receive healing okay uh, and a good resource is ministering healing and deliverance um the, the book that pastor has written and you can go to it and then it's it's like uh, something it is actually okay in in the uh, in the sense it's it's to minister to others but but i'm sure that we can use it to minister to ourselves some of the steps that we can take inviting god's presence inviting the presence of the holy spirit to bring to our memory you know those things that we need to forget uh, those things that we need to actually forgive Right. There are, maybe there are people who we have not forgiven. Right? Maybe maybe it's us. We have not forgiven ourselves right? um, for some of the things that we did in the past, some of the things that we have not done in the past. Maybe we missed out on some opportunities, things like that. You know, it could be n number of factors. But maybe we have not forgiven ourselves. And uh, well, the Lord says, you know, He has forgiven. So how can I? How can we not forgive? Right. So maybe we need to forgive ourselves. Okay. The other thing is that when we uh, when we see that we have a disagreement with our spouse and that's slowly escalating and voices are becoming louder and you know emotions are being stirred up and it's heading towards uh, you know towards becoming a heated argument and and you know where it's heading and you, and, and the Holy Spirit actually gives us a check in our spirit you know so when we know that it's heading there it's time to put things on pause and say okay let's not talk about it now um let's talk about it later okay because we're not in a state to address it objectively right so we can say okay let's put a pause on this and we'll come back to it when we are in a better state of mind right um also in this in the same way uh, we need to 
not avoid the issue. Okay, so when we say okay, we'll we'll come back to it later. We have, with the intention that we are going to address that thing because this is not yet solved. Right? This thing is not yet solved. It is still a problem. Uh, it, there, it, it always has that undercurrent of uh, creating more problems. So we're going to definitely address it, but we are going to address it at a later time when we emotionally we are better off. We are emotionally we are capable of handling it right because right now judgment is going to be clouded we are going we're not going to be objective we are going to be severely biased and it's going to cause more anger and hurt and say things so put things on pause right but we are not going to avoid it because avoiding certain things also erupts at a time and right? it keeps building up building up let's say somebody's uh, doing something, saying something, and then you just pretending, you're just living in a state of denial, pretending you didn't get hurt, or denying the fact that it it, it didn't hurt you, right? Uh, so you, basically, we are uh, not addressing that issue. Right? It is still there, unresolved, and we are avoiding it for whatever reason. And uh, maybe we, we feel that it will, you know, it will unnecessarily create problems. But then you're just stuff. You it is creating. Uh, you know, you are uncomfortable with it, and uh, and just keeping it in, keeping it in, and one day it will, it will just, you know, there will be an explosion, right? Um, and it, it, it might, it might be worse off than at that time, you know, initially when it happened. It might build to create more damage, right? And sometimes just keeping it in, like we saw earlier, it creates, uh, you know, it just shows up in terms of our health or you know some kind of sickness you know what pe what the doctors call as psychosomatic symptoms or psychosomatic diseases so emotionally we get so stirred up and it, it breaks out right, in the phys in our physical senses as well right so so it, it affects the marriage it affects the relationship there's no you know there's no joy there's no happiness there's no peace right um well the other thing to do, uh, I mean, we're just looking at, you know, some of these things uh, uh, which which create conflict, and uh, uh, we're looking at some of the things that um, contribute to it. Okay, um, now some of uh, there could be some solutions, helpful solutions from sincere sources, but not the solution. It could be you know, several things being spoken, several things being said, but it, it is not. It is not helpful. It is not really solving. Okay, so here are things, some things to stay away from. Okay, because they do not really ad address the issue. Does not help solve the problem. Okay, one is uh, being very aggressive in the sense uh, you feel anger. You 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 know you try to intimidate with your aggression. Right? Uh, you speak louder than the other person, drown out the other person's voice, and uh, you know just effectively shut. That person up, okay, and uh, you feel very triumphant. Okay, that's it. I won. <laughs> you know, um, so you won, which means that uh, someone is the loser. But forgetting that we are the same team, right? So if somebody in the t team has lost, you have lost. The, right? the team has lost. So you can't have one person winning and the other person losing and both being in the same team, right? which means that. Uh, well, it's affected the team. So, uh, we though we might, it might be a temporary fix, a temporary calm, saying that okay, this is it. Um, but it's it's only temporary. And the problem still remains. The second one is when we stuff things, when we bottle up things, when we when we don't um, address it, when we avoid it. You know, it can. It can lead to other problems, um, and on the same lines, there could be some indirect things that we, you know, uh, clear, uh, clearly say, you know, uh, without being clear, some indirect things. Um, it could be, uh, uh, you know, it could be like uh, you're showing that you're angry, but you're not saying that you're angry, right? Uh, it could be in the way that you're not smiling. It could be in the way that uh, maybe you're not. Speak.
what is wrong is in nothing and you're not even acknowledging it nothing is wrong everything is fine really yeah but then you know you're not participating you're not fully there uh, so indirectly you're saying that something is uh, wrong um well without addressing the issue the other thing is this without addressing it with the spouse you talk about what is happening with someone else, right? who's other than your spouse um uh, without taking it up with the spouse again okay, you know um with with someone else at work with, with someone something because you just you just uh, you just want to be well you just want to be understood you just want to be told that you are right and your spouse is wrong so in other words we're just seeking to be validated okay i am right in feeling this way my husband or wife is not right in feeling that way or saying that way so it's not doesn't solve again doesn't resolve the conflict uh if we are seeking validation okay maybe sometimes uh, the person does and person shares it with the family member right maybe with the uh, one's parents and saying my husband is doing this my wife is doing this he's always like this and uh, well saying the others maybe they are agreeing yeah even we notice that and you you're feeling kind of uh you know justified in some way right but it doesn't solve it's not helpful um the other thing is unforgiveness okay so saying saying to yourself i'll never forgive my spouse for saying that i'll never forgive my spouse for doing that uh i'm uh, you know, i'll never forgive and sometimes um uh, you know we do that and unforgiveness um is is not helpful in a relationship we not we, we we won't be able to go beyond that unforgiveness it's it's it doesn't help uh, the relationship it, it doesn't help the relationship to grow to thrive and we are stuck there right it's like a gate it's like a wall um it is it is uh, it is uh, not allowing the two people in the in in the marriage relationship to heal to experience uh, the peace of god uh, to experience reconciliation um it it's 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 there it's blocking all that and so unforgiveness um so if if either spouse is holding on to unforgiveness um then it's it's a bad thing it's a dangerous thing and uh, one one should not do that it's very unhealthy Okay. the other thing is also the silent uh, you know treatment or um or the whole thing just disintegrating the relationship and it just come down to a place where uh, either one person is just refusing to speak or both are just not talking to each other okay so and unfortunately if children are there they get you know, they get in the they get uh, stuck in between this stuck in this whole thing you know i, I remember we, we used to have some neighbors um uh, i'm talking about a long time back so uh, i noticed something that the wife will not speak to the husband directly you know the wife will always um, say like for example if if it's dinner time and uh, she just wants to uh, announce so she'll always uh, the wife will always send the child and say okay t- call your father say dinner is ready or um, whatever you know so the child is always the go between so if the child is not there absolutely nothing um and the same way with the husband as well so it was a very very dysfunctional uh, home that we noticed and um, unfortunately the the children get stuck out there so uh, well there's no resolving of, of conflict if it's going to be the you know the silent treatment it's just two people Know, living under the same roof um it is not god's plan it is not god's design for marriage and uh, definitely he, this also is like a, is is like a block which uh, does not allow the husband and the wife to 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 really journey into all that god has for them okay okay so 
um, so how do we um, how do we deal with these emotions? How do we deal with these anger? Um, we 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 need to deal with it, of course, and we need to learn to address that in a mature way. Okay, that verse that we start we read uh, says, "Be led by the Spirit, walk in this." Sorry, walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. So there is a way to learn to address that um, that emotion that you're feeling. Right? There is a way to um, to deal with it. So, okay, what is that way? Okay, the Holy Spirit empowers that because if that is the design, if that is the truth, then God is behind that. Right in the sense, God is hundred percent there to back us up. If you're saying, "God, I, Lord, I, I want to walk in this way. This is what Your will is. This is what Your desire is," then God backs us up with His grace. God backs us up with His, with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It gives us the ability to walk in that way. Okay, so uh, some things to avoid is uh, not to hit out at their character, not to put that person down, not to insult the person, not to blame. Okay, many times we blame the person, other person. It's it's just you. It's it's all because of you, uh, and uh, it could be partly true, right? But there's no sense in there's no point in just blaming. It is not going to solve. Okay. Um, well, if if a conflict is very very deep, intense, and you realize that um, uh, you know, as as husband and wife, you're not able to resolve it, right? Um, so there's no there's no harm in getting a good Christian counselor uh, to help guide the process of uh, resolving the conflict. You know, there's no stigma. Right? Sometimes uh, you know there, there culturally there could be a stigma. You know attached. You know what's what stays. Um, you know these kind of things. You, how can you talk in public? You know, these kind of things should be within closed doors. I don't want the other person to know. Uh, I, I'd rather suffer in silence than talk about this to other person. Oh, I'm so ashamed, so embarrassed. It's a dishonor to the family. You know, all these kinds of thoughts and reasonings. Right? But the fact is that um, there's no stigma attached. You can, uh, one can get help uh, and resolve. It's a good thing to resolve. One can get the right kind of help. Uh, it could be a, a very objective, mature voice, right? A voice of, uh, and that kind of a voice of truth, uh, uh, an objective voice is required. A person who can actually uh, give an objective view of things, right? So, so you know, okay, it's not a member of the family who could be biased. It's not a you know someone who could be uh, emotionally connected to you, so that they can whatever they give could could. Uh, affect the other uh, person, but here it it can be in a very objective uh, voice, or objective counsel, uh, not a biased one. So there's no there's no partiality here. That would be helpful. Okay. So uh, we're going to look at uh, some simple steps. Uh, these are uh, seven steps um, that would really help um, a couple to resolve the conflict. Okay, so some of the things need to be done individually. Okay, like the first one. Okay, pray and prepare your heart. Okay, so praying always helps. Um, so your heart is prepared because when, when when we are clouded with emotion, when we are you know kind of um, completely in an unreasonable state of mind, uh, to pause and to pray, to pause and to pray about the situation, to um, and uh, and. Well, this is what Matthew twelve thirty four says: the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So, if the heart is full of anger, if the heart is full of uh, you know uh, unforgiveness. Well, the, it's it's a bad thing to get into you know even talk um, to the other person. So, pause, take a few steps back, and say, okay, let me pray, right? And and talk to God about it. Talk to God that the fact that um, you know you are hurting. Talk to God, and the fact that uh, you know injustice has been done. Uh, talk to the Lord and say, Lord, this this ought not to be so. You know, 
and also talk to the Lord about the other person. You know, we can pray for the person who has actually wronged us. Even, even as we pray, the Lord will um, pour out, uh, you know, His Spirit upon us and 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 make our hearts tender uh, towards the other person as we pray. Right? So our hearts are prepared in that sense. So the emotion of anger that we are feeling is not felt anymore. Right? We have strangely calmed down because the peace of God uh, has, has been poured out into our hearts. The peace of God uh, also acts as a sentry, right? guards our heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Right? We read that in Philippians 4. So um, all these things happen when we pray. Um, right? So uh, the next one is to receive God's empowering to love and forgive. Okay, so we are praying, and that's preparing our heart. And um, and as we pray, we realize that okay, some of these truths come to our mind. The Romans five five talks about how the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So you realize that okay, I have the love of God. I have this unconditional love of God. This in spite of love of God. Has been poured out into my heart. You know, I'm, I'm a recipient. I'm a, I've received that, and that needs that needs to be expressed, and that can be expressed. And uh, but but I, I've already received that love. So um, God empowers us through His Spirit to express that love. God empowers us through His Spirit to even forgive the unforgivable. Right, uh, because that that is what he did. So, and all these scriptures about how we need to forgive, as God in Christ forgave us. Right, uh, Ephesians uh, four, the last verse, and be kind. Ephesians four and uh, verse thirty to be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Okay. So that's the standard, that's the model. So the Holy Spirit will always bring us to that place. Right? Um, he will exalt Jesus. The words of Jesus, he will quicken. And he'll bring us to that place of conform our, our image or our nature and character being conformed to the Lord Jesus. Right? So as we give place, as we give place in prayer, in preparation as we receive as we are you know and that to receive requires humility saying to receive requires submission so we're submitting to god saying okay whatever god whatever you want to say whatever you want to do you know um i remember uh, being very angry once with my wife and um, and this was on a Saturday, right? And it was a Saturday, and uh, and the next day I was supposed to lead worship. So I don't know. I don't even remember now what we argued about, what we fought about. But uh, I remember I was very angry. Then I just had that argument, and I got on my bike, and I left. And uh, with no destination in mind, I was just riding through the streets of Bangalore and uh, feeling very angry. And in my mind, uh, and I said, okay, let me just pray. I talked to God. I'm saying, I'm, I'm complaining to God. I'm saying, God, Lord, you know what happened. Lord, I said this, and she said this. Lord, I said this, and she did this. Lord, I did this, and so I'm just, you know, just pouring out everything. And I just felt, okay, God, I think I need to just confess the things that I did wrong. Okay. Uh, after this, I said, she said, I said, she said. You know, I, I said, okay, God, you know, these are things that I did wrong, Lord. Uh, I know I shouldn't have said this. Actually, I should have just, you know, I should have kept quiet. I, I didn't, you know, I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't have said this. And then I came to a point. I finished my list. Then I now I wanted to talk to God about what she shouldn't have said, what was wrong with her, and I could sense the spirit of God just, you know, saying, okay, stop. Okay, uh, you. You've told me where you went wrong. Uh, now stop. Don't worry about the other part. Don't worry about the part where she went wrong. Okay, I'll deal with that. But you've you've confessed, and uh, you have said, okay, where you went wrong. That's fine. That is fine with me. And uh, I realized that uh, I said, okay, God, you know, that's it. Fine. 
I, I, I just want to thank you for talking to me. I just want to thank you. And and just pretty soon there was so much of healing, too much, so much of change of emotions that I was just I was just singing, praising God. And uh, I went back home in a very different uh, frame of mind, right? Uh, completely uh, changed, and uh, I completely forgot what is it that we even argued about. Right? Even today, I'm trying to think what is it. So many years, have, some decades have gone, but then I, I, I'm not able to recollect. You know, what is it? So the God, so the Lord can bring us to that place. So now I was I was ready to apologize. I was ready to, you know. Uh, work through those things, and I, I was in that frame of mind when I got back home. Right. So when we pray, when we give space for God to fill our hearts, um, to empower us. So empowering always, you know, from a place of humility, from a place of submission. So the Lord pours out His love. The Lord begins to speak to us, and His words bring healing. Right? His words bring healing. His instruction brings healing. The Scripture talks about how. The entrance of his word uh, brings light, right? So, yeah, I just see Rosalind's comment also. Holy Spirit corrects and doesn't want to talk about the other person. Yeah, so true. Yeah. So, um, so sometimes what happens is um, God also uh, gives us the next steps. Okay. Now, here when I talk about my, you know, the conflict or argument, it was a simple thing, right? Uh, but it's not always so. Okay, there could be certain things that are complex, multi layered. Right? Uh, one thing which is connected to another thing, connected to another thing, so it's, it's a little complex, right? So, uh, when we pray, when we receive God's love, when we receive His empowering, we also receive the wisdom from Him, wisdom for the next step wisdom for the next steps right so um so god gives us the wisdom wisdom for what wisdom to really go to the root of the matter right sometimes we think okay this is this is why this problem happened um well that might be just partly true right there is a there is a different level altogether so there's a there's a deeper reason which to that answer, that question, why is a deeper reason, and and sometimes it's so hidden, right? Hidden to human eyes or human reasoning or human analysis, and and it it requires the wisdom of God to get to the root of it, right? And and the Lord, in a very non-condemning but definitely convicting manner, reveals through his wisdom, the root cause of that problem, the root cause of, well, this is why you did what you did. This is why you said what you said, right? It is not that spur of the moment anger, but there's a deeper issue which has not been solved. Right? So, um, and also gives us the wisdom, okay, uh, to address that, right? Proverbs 2, 6 talks about how the Lord gives wisdom and knowledge and understanding come from him. He's a source. So he gives us, and uh, James chapter 1 also talks about if we lack wisdom, we can actually go to him boldly. And uh, he will give to us without holding back. And without ridic ridiculing us, he will give to us. So uh, so we need to actually take time to listen and say, God, um, okay, yeah, I've received, you know, this but then how what what do i do now um what are the next steps uh, how do i go about things so the holy spirit is spirit of wisdom um he, he's uh, the spirit of wisdom and revelation right so he will give us the instruction what we need to do okay um so many times um uh we when we say okay uh, you know there's a cause behind it and then we just blame the devil I blame Satan and say, okay, the devil made me do it. The devil made me say this. It's the devil. It's the devil. Yeah. Well, in a, in a sense, it is correct. Right? Satan causes that. But we also know that uh, our own unrenewed flesh, our own well unrenewed mind, our own fleshly desires and appetites create a lot of confusion. Right? It contributes to the conflict. I never forget that. So 
uh, well, the enemy might empower us or, you know, uh, demonically certain things are in, energized, influenced. Uh, but also we need to understand that it could, it could be our own choices, right? Um, so um, our choices could maybe open the door for the enemy. You know, our continued wrath has um, opened wide the doors for the enemy to to take a foothold, to take even you know uh, um, a, a place to influence. So we need to close that door. I repent uh, and close that door. Say, say, you don't have any right. You don't have any hold in my life. In my life, in my spouse's life, you take your hands off, right? Okay, so uh, things need to be discussed. Things need to be uh, addressed. Okay, so sometimes we, we think that, okay, and, and one, one broad sorry, I'm sorry, uh, we'll solve it. <laughs> and I'm sorry for all that happened. <laughs> um, but we just need to, you know, go into the details, right? be specific, and uh, so uh, it's good to to sit down to talk. It's good to uh, address those things that have caused the problem. Okay, and uh, well, the thing is this: uh, sometimes one person is ready to talk, the other person is not. Okay, emotionally. The other person is not ready. The other person is not willing to do that. We need to give the time. And then when we, um, you know, certain situations are so, let's say, uh, are so hurtful. Certain conflicts are so hurtful, um, and the response or the reaction in anger has been maybe sometimes physically violent, or you know. Uh, there's been so so much of verbal abuse and all that, so it is. Um, uh, it's going to take time, right? It's going to take time for the person to come around and be in a place of wanting to talk again, right? And uh, sometimes it requires uh, a good Christian counselor, a wise Christian counselor, to 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 talk, um, to talk to to. Maybe like an interve intermediary, and to to address that, right? So, um, well, it could be a pastor, it could be a, uh, someone whom they look up to, it could be a certified, a trained, um, gifted you know, Christian counselors who could do that. So, um, so this needs to be done. But the fact is that it needs to be discussed, right? It needs to be addressed. It cannot be just brushed aside. Okay. Um, and so, um, just need to talk. Why happen? Right? And not just one person doing the talking, but both. Okay, this is what I felt. This is what I, I know. This is what I said. But and and uh, what would be helpful is to really share. Okay, um, uh, what one person felt when uh, because of the other person's action or words. Okay, and the statement could be like this. You know. I was hurt when you said this. So it, it, it's not like saying you said it and you hurt me. So, so, so you know, there's a difference, right? So it's it's more accusational if you're saying, okay, you hurt me when you said that, uh, rather than that to say I was hurt or I felt sad, uh, I felt I was shaken, I was broken. You know, this is what uh, I experienced. So those I statements are, are really helpful at that stage when we are sitting down to discuss, uh, sitting down to talk about you know, what went wrong. Okay, and we are addressing the problem. Right. So those I statements really help. So uh, it doesn't put the other person on the defensive because you are talking about what you went through, what you felt. Right? Saying you know I felt angry uh, when I when you when I heard these words from you, or I felt really sad when you did this or when you didn't do this right so it helps uh, address those things in a in an easy manner right okay so uh, so uh, here here's something that was um, uh, these practical steps 
Um, it's actually from um, uh, the Colorado State uh, University, and uh, there's an article there. Um, uh, the hyperlink is also given, so you could probably check that original uh, article also. Well, the first thing is to take time to identify one specific issue, right? What is that specific thing that you want to resolve? Okay. So, for example, if it is like, uh, you know, I want to talk about the fact that, um, uh, well, we are always late for this, this particular, you know, whenever there's an appointment, whenever there we need to go to church, whenever we need to go, we are always late. I want to talk about that. Okay. So, don't talk about 10 different things. Let's start with just one, right? Um, and, um, and also, uh, second, they decide if if it's worth discussing. You know, is it, is it a minor thing? Is it a major thing? Um, so, uh, you know, and what are the intentions? Uh, how big is the issue? Okay. The third thing, um, decide when we can actually talk about it. You know, it has to be a good time when there's privacy, uh, when when there's uh, when there is not the children are not there, when the guests are not there. Maybe, maybe. Uh, so it could be, you know, it could be, a, it, it, and also the place, you know, is it at home or do we discuss it elsewhere? Uh, so pick a time, pick a, pick a place and, um, and decide which is the ideal time. And you have uh, both are in a, you know, in, in a state of mind or in a frame of mind to actually discuss it. Okay. It's like if one person is, uh, you know, tired, the other person is all full energetic. It doesn't really help you know, because the other person is doesn't want to do it. Like emotionally uh, drained, right? Um, then they also take time to understand feelings, thoughts, uh, and past actions. Um, get focused before talking uh, about it. Okay. Then um, start the discussion with what you think is positively occurring with the issue. Okay. Um, three things that we did in the past. Maybe it's been a long uh long thing long i mean long standing issue or problem then okay we could talk about okay this is what we did you know this is uh, these are three things that we did or two things that we did in the past uh, but it does not resolved it okay this is what we did i know we went for this um you know this marriage workshop but we really didn't put things uh in practice and therefore you know we kind of let things uh trail away we didn't really follow it up so it has not helped right so um so talk about that as well what did we do actually what initiative did we take okay um and also this, this thing that we spoke about right uh, what do you feel you know i feel angry i feel sad um i think uh, you don't love me i don't i feel unloved i feel uncared for by you and when you say this etc this will be really helpful Okay. Um, okay. So uh, several other things which could really uh, these are practical uh, things that would help us in identifying the problem, in uh, staying focused on the problem, and also having the right place and time uh, um, for the problem, um, and also help us um, you know look at it objectively and talks about talk about okay what are some solutions what are some things that we can um, that suggestions that we can do uh, or what are some steps that we can take so the thing is uh, to come to an agreement on what steps can be taken okay now now we know that it's not as easy as um, as we are discussing it now you know because emotions are involved right so uh, one has to be mature you know one has to be open to the thing that okay they could be stirring up of emotions Right, but um, even as we are talking, you know, they, midway there could be a there could be a tendency to just the whole thing breaking down, right? But if both are committed and patient and uh, and wanting to solve, then we we'll continue to stick to the process, stick to the discussion, and see through that it can be resolved. The, there will be alternatives, and this is what we need to do. Okay, okay. So we'll we'll continue with this. Um, I know it's um, it's a kind of uh, uh, a topic that is not very 
um, not simple. It's not like an open and shut thing. So we will we have some more things to discuss. So we'll continue with this uh, next class, right? Okay. Thank you. God bless. You take care. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Bye bye.